Welcome once again to the Inside LAFC Max and Vince podcast. We are following the game against the San Jose Earthquakes. We all watched. We're going to break that down. We're going to have an interesting podcast here today. Uh, a little bit of a free for all in the yeah. second segment, but we're going to hold off on determining what that is. Big welcome, surprise in the second. Welcome segment. to the world of podcasting, Max Bredos, Vince Larosa, and uh, should we just jump right into this? Yeah, we should. Because did yesterday feel like Saturday to you? It felt like a Saturday to me. Yeah. But no. But then sort harsh reality of. today was Monday. Yeah. Sunday games we don't get a lot of. Sunday afternoon games are, are, are an oddity. Yeah. That started at 4 o'clock local. Uh, a lot of sun, guys fighting off the, the, the glare, the shadows creeping in. Um, I know you checked it out on our case, my KCOP 13. I did. You were saying we're, we're getting a little too many, too many stories in there? A lot of stories. But I guess the game, you know, <laughs> was tough. <laughs> But uh, I just, it, I'm, it was, I, it was a I very hard game. I was going to say it was a hard game to call because there was, yeah. we know LFC was, it was, was, there was missing some rhythm there. And then San Jose was coming in and uh, eager, obviously, to get. San Jose is the hottest team in MLS. Seven games. You look beaten. at, yeah. Uh, two of them are wins. Yeah, but now one two. of those two is against LAFC. But they've played at Sporting Kansas City. Uh -huh. Got a point. They won at Seattle. They got a point in Portland, which obviously is very challenging. And uh, they were buoyed by this new signing, Jeremy Abobasi. Very odd. The substitution patterns were very strange, but we'll get into that here as well. And um, there was uh, – it was a – this is a team that I, I think just – Tactically, across the board, has changed. All this, all this talk that we always hear about this man marking—it's an odd way they play. But I, yeah. I don't know if you just call that classic man marking and uh, endless pressure from this team. It was, it was a different. There was a lot of low block. There was a lot of a lot of guys behind the ball at many times, which was different than the earthquakes team we may have seen mm -hmm. in recent past. Am I right with that? It yeah, was, no. Matt Doyle pointed it out too. It wasn't traditional man marking. Actually, they've kind of. Changed it up a little bit. Right. Well, I was watching the game against Portland. Granted, that's a road game. So, you know, things change. And I saw that. Yeah. I saw that in the Seattle game. So as I look back in prepping for this, I just don't know if it's a, a permanent shift. I think it should be the way they're playing. Yeah. I mean, it gets out the best abilities of Kate Cow. It looks like Espinosa's doing some things. Uh, Chofi started, but I think Abobasi is eventually going to take that role uh, yeah. as a center forward. They're, they can be a dangerous team, which is interesting to say because we thought a lot of these signings weren't painting out. These are all Matias's guys, right? And they, we thought a lot of those signings were not painting out because they were coming to a league and trying to do something in MLS when you play in the summertime and there's a lot of travel and it's grueling and you just can't be Elsa your way through MLS. You, you can't. Yep. Um, and so he tried it for a couple seasons and then wised up, it seems like, um, and it's working. It's and working. They dug such a big hole for themselves during the season, so they're still, they're still climbing. Look, let's out talk. Of it. Uh, look, I know people are going. Like, this was, you know, this was a this was a tough game for LAFC. I, I don't think it was unexpected when you see all the things that have been happening the last few weeks with players coming and going. Yeah. You uh, you see a team uh, introducing some new players as well, like they did with Chicho Arango. We'll talk about him as well. This is you're facing a team that's in very good shape. It's frustrating, I know, for the LAFC supporters out there. You wake up this morning, Monday, they're in a playoff position. Somehow. Somehow they're in a playoff position. For one good month. Things are going to – people are going to put their hand up for this club and they're going to kick in. This is what they call a bad patch. And it feels like it's never going to end, but it does end. And LAFC has so much talent. And before, as we delve into what happened here – you know, San Jose were the better team, really front pillar for to post in this game, by and large. And yet, well, and yeah, there, let's get right into it. And yet, yeah, LAFC they, had a chance to tie and, and win this the game, game. And look, I know people, listen, this is how you have to approach this. MLS is a singular league in the way it's mapped out. And patience pays off. I can assure you that if the season ended today, which it doesn't, 18 games in, LAFC will be preparing for a playoff game against the Sounders, I believe. Or is it Sporting? It's Sounders because Sporting's either top. it's a tough game, but it's a playoff game. So, as I said, a great target for this team now is finishing fourth, which you get a home game. It's not far fetched away. They're like four points, five points, I think, from that. So, they'll things are going to get better, and 
this is an adjustment period because you're losing significant parts. I know you'd say Mark Anthony Kay was with Canada. Uh, he would have probably started this game as he's come back from international duty, where he was great. Mm-hmm. Uh, a big trade for allocation money. Corey Baird, the same thing. So, you know, you've thinned the ranks out to help this team build uh, in future seasons. Uh, they have to fix some things. But I, I, I think at the end, when this, this, the, the, the end is near, it's not the case. They could the struggle could continue for a little bit longer, but we're going to find out here soon. Didn't we say this a couple months ago when yes. people were like, oh, "The sky's falling. This is the worst this team's ever been." And we were like, "Actually, it could get worse," it could. Uh, but it didn't. It actually got better. Um, we had that little month, and you and I got to got to wink at the camera and be like, "Ah, see, we told you so." Uh, and then we're wrong again. We're we're routinely wrong here, uh, which everyone loves to point out for you and I. I guess that's what we are, public personas, and uh, we have to live with it and eat crow, and we're fine. Uh, but it's not great all the time. Yeah, it's but not great all the time. You get used to it's, it's, crow. It's, yeah, it's not good for not your, good eating a bird. Yeah, it's not good for your mental health all the time. But sometimes you you know you just put the Twitter down for a second and move on. Uh, but yeah, so this was a team that had never played together. It just, felt like that. It felt like it, and it felt like it. But also and tried some new things with positions. Tried so, some new uh, things. Twesta coming up a bit, but that he came kind of went back to that six. Well, look, the the three in the midfield are never static and that's the point right yeah. uh but you go back to the 433 you have chicho in there who by and large for a guy that had never played with a lot of these guys I had some good moments i mean that oof, that ball to carlos or in the in the second half wow uh should have been put away and that's this this is the bigger or the first half one i was talking about first half sorry first half where he came yeah, in half. and he had, and then, uh half. nathan half. came in and yeah. blocked it second half was the uh is that a shot I, by the way, was across. You, the conversation that you guys had to have to to reason out if that was a shot or like that could have taken up the whole broadcast. <laughs> was it? Was that a shot? No, I, I think I, he was crossing that. Look, I look, saw look, look at the way look he looks. Over to his right, suggesting he was going that yeah. way. Yeah, Diego Rossi happened to be somewhere in the area. Maybe no, I, th- I think he was. No, it wasn't to Rossi. No, it was a shot. Yeah, um, it, it wasn't a great pass from Carlos. Uh, Carlos was a little off, yeah. a little frustrated. Yeah. Everyone was a little. So these off. guys are mentally. They're not at their sharpest. They're and, they're pressing and pressing not in the the sense that we like to see them pressing. They're pressing as in they're holding the reins too tight and everyone's a little bit That's afraid. That's a great one. I like that. When, right? you, when you're holding on too tight, you just can't. Or, yeah. Or you're white knuckling it. You're late to get to the airport. You're driving and you want to get there. And, and then on top of it, they're making it. mistakes and putting themselves behind it. So you can't score goals right now. And then you're giving up goals. So you need more goals to overcome those goals. And you played into San Jose's hands because they were going to just have Christian Espinoza and... Cade Cal sit high, and they were going to play over your press. And there was times where Atwesta had the ball, and it was kind of like Sporting KC where I'm watching guys just fly by him. Yeah, and then they anchor. lose it, and you go, uh, uh-oh, is anybody still back there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Maria see it on the screen, yeah. and we're calling it off a monitor, so we couldn't see it either. You're hoping someone would pop yeah, in there. And you're, the, back, the back line has to adjust. To yeah, back. you're seeing Mario just have to run 40 yards to do things. Uh, I don't think, by the way, don't think that was a foul for the first goal. I will say this, unnecessary when he doubled back. So he had that guy beat. He had a step on him, but he was like, ah, I'm going to get a little nibble in on yeah. this guy. And went into him, didn't get him too hard. Probably not a foul, but unnecessary. Also, not a yellow card. Yellow. As you pointed out, as you pointed out on the broadcast, the guy now is another close to another yellow card suspension. That's crazy. That wasn't a yellow card. There was this impending doom when you saw it because San Jose hadn't really found their way through. They were making some good runs, but then this free kick, and you're like, no, it couldn't be. And, you know, and Thomas Romero probably should have been close to that post. Yep. Uh, it slipped in there, but it was a very well hit ball. And that just sets things in motion. And I know Bob mentioned it last week that S Sporting Kansas City had five shots on goal and there's four goals. And it's a similar thing. I think they scored their first two goals off their two shots. So you're And, and hit the crossbar with They hit the crossbar. Way. So they were the, they got to change that rule. I'm sorry. That should be a shot on goal. That should be a shot on goal. Yeah. That's fine. Am I outrageous to think that? No. Because we were going, well, he hit the crossbar. I mean, it was very <laughs> – And it was it was a good shot. It was a good shot. And they had good chances, but I think you've, you've, you've got to defend the good chances better, and I think they know that. Um, again, paying a very heavy price, but if that keeps happening, you have to prepare for it Yeah, and score goals. But what, but what do you do, right? So there's a lot of people out there, and we'll, we'll just acknowledge it. There's the, the Bob Out people. Um, we get – told a lot that we can't speak our mind because we you work for the club I used to work for the club this is absolutely not true we can talk about it it just when we ask people what do you do and they just just fire everyone 
We're like, that's not a strategy. No. <laughs> it's not like, who do you bring in? Look at Atlanta. They're still looking for a head coach. They have gone to the ends of the earth, literally. They want, with Fonseca, nah, don't want to do it. Uh, you know, who else have they probably, imagine who else they probably talked to. I mean, reading that uh, uh, athletic article about how the Fonseca thing fell through, they literally had their team videographer like, hey, follow him around as he's at the training facility because this is our guy. Uh, how'd that work out for you? I, I spoke to Maurice Adu uh, on my other podcast I do, and uh, I asked him about it. I go, all these coaching for Atlanta, it seems like they have a pretty good guy there. And this is, we'll talk about it a bit because that's LAFC's next opponent. We know a lot of folks are going to Atlanta. This was circled on the calendar, one of the two Eastern Conference teams. Mm -hmm. But uh, maybe their search is there. Everyone seems to like the Valentino guy, and he's. I mean, I, I would give him the rest of the season. But, back, but again, back to what we're saying. So what, what, what do you do? So if you get a different coach in, what is, is, does he all of a sudden install a, uh, a bunker and counter team? The team that has never played that way ever, and now you think that you can just flip a switch? I'm just, I'm asking these questions. I don't know the answers. Maybe this is what you do. Right. Uh, but that's why when people get on me saying, like, uh, you can't speak your mind. No, I'm just like, I'm a little pragmatic about it because I've seen it. And I'll say it again. It can always get worse. Well, let's talk about the other thing that people mentioned. They go, shouldn't have traded Zimmerman. Shouldn't have traded Mark Anthony. Yeah. That but, is now, uh, how many years ago did we trade Walker okay, Zimmerman? Okay, but th th that happens because you're dealing with a contract. Yeah. Uh, and it's a salary cap league. It's a salary cap league. You've got to adjust. Someone's going to offer you a million bucks for a player that you may not be able to make whole with your, your, your contract offer. Mm -hmm. So this is unfortunately the way it works, and LAFC know that, and that's why they made this move. That's why they did it with Mark Anthony K. It's not like they're trying to do it to not be competitive, but this is the reality, and when you have an offer come in, that's when you got to make a move. Now you have allocation money, and that plays into the Bob thing because, yes, you lose some players, but they're building towards being competitive the end of this season, being competitive yeah. next season. It's always looking ahead. You've always got to look ahead. That is how this league is built up. Maybe that changes one day, yeah. but right now it doesn't. Well, I think what we're seeing, and sometimes it works out for teams, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I think Barcelona is a good example of this. It's the, everyone knows the cycle is over. Like this first group, it's now kind of time to move on from them for for sporting reasons, for financial reasons, for they have other aspirations like a Diego Rossi and Edward Atuesta. But COVID happened, and they have not been able to do a full cycle, kind of rinse and, you know, get it, get it done. And so we're seeing them cry, kind of do it on the fly. And uh, it, it, like I said, it either kind of works out for you or it's really painful. And it's really painful right now. It's really but, painful. But there's some the reason why it's so painful is because you look at these guys like Chicho Arango is a very talented player and it showed in yeah. just his his what, how well, he's on for about 70 minutes. Yeah, the only issues with him was he was timid on some of the in front of goal. Right. Which Every, you're like, wait, yes, I'm looking at highlight reels and you're smashing them home. But that that can't be unexpected. Well, we tried, especially when you said you said you defer. You got Carlos Vela there. You're like, ah. I'm going to hit him. And the one time he did play him across should have been a goal. Well, we tried to tell everyone there's no there's no uh signing that LAFC is ever going to bring in the guy just stands up top and bangs in goals, right? He's going to have to be part of the play. And I will give him credit. He was trying to be part of the play. And again, that's Carlos Vela. So you pass to Carlos Vela. I mean, it's not a bad strategy. Uh, but yeah, people thought he was just going to show up and just score. Score, score, score. Just shoot, shoot, shoot. No? Yep. <laughs> really quickly before we move on, it's 2-1 and we said it. Like, there was a great chance for Vela there. The chance by Latif. Chance for Chicho. Uh, chance the chance for Latif. but the, the one for Latif was, I think, the, the biggest one, which you were sitting there, you go, you see all the space. He did everything right and then tried to go to the near post. This game ends 2-2, two -two and uh, I know people go, here we go again. It would still be disappointing. You'd be disappointed. You're like, the way San Jose played, you go, that's a really good result. Yeah. Compared to what they've been doing with other opponents, how they're in an ascendancy, they have confidence to really buckle in there and do that, then, you know, that's... It was. It's not far fetched for it happening. Yeah. It was. Uh. It was a very strange second half, and the chances started to dry up, and got a little testy at the end. The whistle started flying with some more frequency, but I think you could say that's that. This is a result that you would expect in a, a rivalry that is starting to develop. I think we need to get Raheem in here to just sarcastically clap us. <laughs> some frustration. How did he boiling not get a yellow card. He didn't get a yellow. He didn't. I was, I was sitting there so Mario Breeze on a guy in the first 10 minutes, yellow card. Raheem literally walks right up to the referee's face. And wait, let's talk about 
Why did he slap Cheeky? Why did he slap Cheeky's hand? He knocked the hand away. That was God. very odd. Yeah, that. And also, uh, the I've hug. never. I rarely see that. The hug that he put on uh, one of the San Jose players. What, what was? What was that referee? What was going on with that referee? Some strange, some strange things. Because at the beginning, as Christopher Sullivan was saying in the broadcast, he was like, "Not whist- not too many whistles." And yep. then the whistles. And then he's like, "Oh, here's your yellow card." Okay. <laughs> it was a bit odd. And again, that's not it. San Jose deserve to win here. They played a good. Uh, they, they, the way they wanted to play, they were able to execute it. Yeah, and they, they have the pieces to execute. They soaked up pressure. Uh, they, they kept, they prevented their, uh, their, their back line's not very fast. So they prevented their back line from having to run back to goal and, and kind of scatter. So, but they kept the numbers back. And then they said, we have Cade Cow, who's a dynamic, incredible 17 year old that looks 25. Guy with a and, nonstop motor. Yeah. And Christian Espinoza, two guys that are fast. Um, they're hard to get off the ball. Um, and we'll let you guys, we'll give you the freedom to stay a little high, and we'll just play right over their press to your guys' feet, and we can see if we can attack with three. Um, I thought that was one of Chofis's better games, too. Yeah, those guys stepped up. But we also forgot the Carlos Vela Olympic goal attempt, oh. which if Osvaldo Alanis doesn't start off, pushing, that ball goes in the goal. It takes a bounce, and it bounces in. If he pulls that off, that's in, one of the most incredible things. Ever. Oh, it's this close. I can feel it. Yeah. It's this close. But... Uh, a tough couple games here for LAFC, but uh, they're frustrated. But I think there, there's going to be a positive light there. There's a lot of guys that put in okay shifts, good shifts. And I think this was just – I looked at it. This was going to be a, sh- a rough patch because of the, the all the, the comings and goings. Yeah. And a lot of teams are doing that. But LAFC was more active than most. And now you, you readjust for uh, – a game here at Atlanta. You have a game at Vancouver. You have an all-star break, which is not going to be a break for a lot of LAFC players because they're going to be involved. Mm-hmm. It's going to be busy time for Carlos Vela. And then you have the Galaxy game to end of August. So it's it's busy, but not for everyone. Yeah. Um, and there's chances, obviously, the road, but there's no, there's no midweek games coming up either. So I think... And uh, I, mean, I don't know if a lot of people agree with me, but I think we need to try to find some consistency. So I think this lineup is strong. I actually, well, I was very excited actually when I saw the lineup. I saw how they were going to do it, despite how rough it looked. If if we can, and a big question mark is Sifu. Uh, he had to come out of the game. Hopefully, it's not uh, you know hamstring or something like that. Um, but if you can put this lineup back together, give them a few games, and like have them start to get some familiarity with each other because I think this might be one of its the team's strongest lineup with injuries and all and everything included. In this formation. Because I think in this formation. As we saw with the three back three with the wing backs, uh Kim Moon Juan more effective, safe to say in that sort of setup. As a wing back, but it's like I think for Kim it's another thing where it's like stop stop throwing so many things at him. I'm a wing back sometimes, I'm in a back four Fair other enough. times. Uh, you know, he got picked on, but that was also because that's where Cal likes to do his business. And uh, again, we've we've talked about it. He's a talented player. I mean, he's he's definitely having his breakout year. Um, and Kim was not sure when can I get forward, when can I be involved. But then instances where you know he underlaps that that play and gets the 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 yellow card for who is it? Is that no, not Judson's yellow card. Although Judson should have got a yellow card. <laughs> a lot. Of, <laughs> Uh, a hand, he's a handful whoever, that one, but that that underlap, like he still has moments where like he can do things. It's just I think he's had so many things thrown at him, and then that's a very fair point. The team keeps switching around him, and he's like, "What? Where am I? Am I coming or going? What's going on here?" And that's that's the tough part about being a wing back or a fullback is you really have to be conscientious about when you are coming or going because they're going to get in behind you if not. Defensively, Mario back. Uh, Bob would say afterwards. Um, uh, they were watching his minutes because he's coming back from that hamstring. They were watching the hamstring, obviously. Yeah. So that and the yellow card, obviously, uh, do, probably do, accelerates do you it. you tell him to go out and get a yellow card in the Atlanta game so he sits out Vancouver instead of the Galaxy? Ooh, hopefully somebody gets reset. I can't remember I can't remember when it was. It was either 2018 or 2019. I do remember somebody needed to get a yellow card. And, oh, I think it was at Tuesta. And I remember the game, he was doing everything he could to get, a, get yellow a yellow card, card. Aside from actually like just insulting the referee, and he couldn't get he couldn't get one. It was actually kind of funny. Very interesting. Um, it's uh, it, 
the back line, obviously, we, we, for, we forgot to mention Eddie Segura is not there. So you have Murillo, Blackman, solid. And uh, Mamadou Fall. It was Mamadou a, Fall uh, has put his hand silver up. Silver lining, yeah. Yeah, and the guy can play out of the back. It's really exciting to see that. So they've we heard that he's made some breakthroughs, and it seems like he's probably moving into that the 15, 16-man group that would, would get some minutes. The midfield, we wait on Sifu. Uh, Latif back in there maybe. Yep. Maybe he comes in if Sifu's not 100% mm-hmm. for this game coming up next Sunday. And Arango strikes me as someone who's going to score, and maybe it's in the Atlanta game. Uh, he was very active. Yes. He found space between the defenders. The quality was there. And whether it's Carlos and Brian or Carlos and Diego, we, we, we still, we, we're still curious about those situations with Diego. It's, uh, it should work. The personnel is, is good, and they're destined to score goals. This is an execution problem. Yes. It, that's, that's another reason why when you're telling me we need to change coaches, we need to fire everyone, I'm like, what coach is going to get them to score goals? What coach comes in and goes, uh, Latif, I'm going to stop you right there. Don't shoot near post. Shoot far post. <laughs> like, it's an execution problem. I, and, again, it, it's because they're making mistakes and they're having to come back in games. So, yes, you got to start from you got to start from minute one. You got to be tight. You got to start limiting mistakes, and then you just got to start executing. It's just the mistakes are an execution problem. It's an execution problem. It is not a philosophy. It is not a tactical problem. It's execution, and possibly, I don't mo- motivation in some respects for some players because some guys just aren't in form right now, and yep. so you got to grind it out. You got to grind it out, and it's it, they they are in it together. I could see it. Um, there's always going to be frustration when you lose games, but I uh, I think there were some rallying points there. Mm-hmm. Even the situation at the end where everyone was going at the ref, and they're focusing it on him. That'll work as long as it's a collective effort. It got a little bit I hairy. Was yelling, I was yelling a little the, out of hand. I was yelling at the TV. I was like, somebody just hit someone. <laughs> that's how that's how it ends. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see uh, where what is next. We'll take a quick break. Mm-hmm. And maybe we'll do a little Atlanta preview. We'll have a bit of a surprise here in the next segment. Yeah. We're still, we're, it's a wait and see right we love now. surprises. We love surprises. Surprises, I found a, a hole in the back of my jeans. Oh, hey. Well, you know, it's some people pay big money to put holes in their jeans. So that's not for you, huh? No one can see it. It's just annoying at this point. All right. So we'll take a break. We'll come back. Exactly. Okay, we're back. No real fanfare. We're just back to do the show. Well, tell them the truth. We were trying to get Messi. We were trying to get Lionel Messi. Made all the phone calls we could. Just not called a bunch of people, uh, all our contacts in Barcelona and Paris and uh, Doha, which was a. Did you hear this offer? One billion dollars for three years for Lionel Messi. Wow. We, let's we'll talk we'll talk a little messy because we we were this close to getting him and his dad to join us on the podcast and it didn't happen. Yep. We had a lot of questions, but LAFC Atlanta Sunday. Two teams in uh, feeling like they're uh, similar. Similar predicaments in yeah. some ways, right? Two teams that uh, completely made expansion teams and expectations different. And then the expansion teams since have looked like expansion teams. Mm-hmm. So these were outliers. Atlanta, who won a, a championship, what, year three? Or year two? Two. Year two. And LAFC, who made the playoffs three straight years, including the uh, Supporter Shield in their second year. Uh because of that, they've got a lot of clout built in, and now when they play each other, it's a big deal. There's no real connection between the cities. Mm-hmm. They're both big cities. Atlanta's the Los Angeles of the South, <laughs> I guess you could say. The Los but Angeles of the South. People get excited for it. And I know I was Pat Aviles, we, we had a call, and he's expecting a good number of LAFC fans to get down there. Please be safe out there. 110 yes. football was going to go there, uh, but Georgia is in a state of emergency, and... Uh, we just couldn't risk the crews and the crews family. Yeah, so be uh, safe. So we're we're gonna stay here. But everyone that's going out there, please be safe. I know it's kind of anti what you want to do. You want to go out there, meet people, have fun, run around the city. Uh, but do your do your best to be safe. And if you are going, please be vaccinated before you go. Wow, that's a good preview of the game there, Vince. Uh, <laughs> all right, all right, all right. We'll do. Uh, but no, there's not much. You were huge on Almada, 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 Almada. They didn't get him. They said they're going to go back from in January. Instead, they got uh, Araujo. Why were you so big but on that? Like, but the Almada thing's odd because he's a Velez Sarsfield player, which is where Gabriel, Gabriel Heinze was coaching. So I can see the connection, but Heinze is not there anymore. And Almada was the most expensive player in Argentina. Right. That uh, uh, Of all the players on any team, River Plate, Boca Juniors, Rossing, 
Almada was the number one prospect in the country. At one point before COVID, they think they were talking $25 million for this guy. Every time I've seen him, I'll say that because we cover the, some of the South American terms. Every time I've seen him, hasn't really performed when I've watched. Not to say he hasn't because I've only watched like three games. He's been. What's his profile? He's a dribbler. Dribbler. Guy? Yeah. He'll, he'll, a lot of one-on-ones. Um, still a work in progress. I mean, I think that's the one thing. And you think uh, Ezequiel Barco, it took a while. He scored a goal for Columbus. He's, I guess he scored two goals, I think. One was a penalty. Mm-hmm. But uh, some of you might have to wait a little bit. So if they're okay to do that, I'm, I love seeing these big name players come here because mm-hmm. it makes it a big deal. Uh, based on some rumors, uh, teams like Manchester United and Arsenal were looking at Almada. So when you're competing there, then people start talking about MLS. I've seen a little of Araujo at Lille. Uh, he's a high usage guy, uh, kind of a Barco type guy. Uh, makes makes seems high like, usage in the sense that he gets a lot of minutes. No, no high usage in the sense that uh, the ball comes to him and it either ends in him shooting or him okay passing off. You know, he he can he can assist. He's, he's a better kind of playmate. He's a playmaker. Um, really needs the ball at his feet um, and is in, involved in a lot of actions. I think. Um, He's a guy that, like I said, I think he is slightly better decision maker than Barco, who holds the ball a little bit too long. But like, where does Barco fit in all this now? I, well, if he gets a good little vein of form, um, I, 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 I see him as somewhat of a featured guy still. No, I mean, you're saying these guys may not be able to coexist. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how it's all going to work out. Yeah, and look, Atlanta United has their issues, and they're working through them. And uh, LAFC is going to go there, and you know. They, they've got to get some confidence back in the squad. I think that's first and foremost because it's lacking. And they'll have a full week to prepare. Mm-hmm. Uh, but um, it's a winnable game. Yes. It's a winnable game. The turf, obviously, you know, uh, we know Bob's not crazy about it. And we know. Uh, and also the last time they were there, didn't go too well. Last time in Atlanta. Yeah, they beat them out here in, in 2019. In 2018, I called that for ESPN. Was it 5-1? 5-0. 5-0. Worst loss in club history. I would also like to say after that loss, things turned very promptly for LFC. They had a good run. Yes. because They was got results. On I'll the- never forget the images of Bob Bradley putting his arm around Vela, putting his arm around Simon, like talking it out. I just sat there and go, yeah, okay, this is a, this is a good teaching moment. And I remember John Thornton saying that, that was, he thought that was one of the most important moments of the season. The, the result. The, or the, just, uh, just the way that they – Took the result in, understood what it meant, um, and from then on out, we're like, this this will never happen again. Um, and it didn't for that season. I mean, largely hasn't until the Sporting KC game. It's been like the last time they've really been blown out. Yeah, and the discussions look again to paint the picture of the club. You look through their their history and how few games were got away from them. You can count them on one hand, mm-hmm. and you don't have to use all five fingers. Right. It was that Atlanta game. It was the sporting game. Um, was it one Minnesota game where they kind of... Minnesota was a 5-1 to one yeah. in the first season. And maybe there was one more? <sighs> no, I don't think so. No. To your point. So just remember, you remember that when you see and you feel crummy when you see those results that it just doesn't happen for this club. They don't get blown out. They're always competitive. Even the San Jose game, as we said, they could have easily ended 2-2. Easily. If they would just execute. Yes. So maybe they can execute here. And maybe getting to the East will do. This is their longest road trip. Uh, so, you know, you can kind of you know, yeah. do more team bonding, that kind of stuff. Play some cards on the plane. Some, oh, there you go. Play uh, some cards on the plane. Don't play against Carlos Vela. I heard he's very good. Never loses. What game? I, I can't. I remember Christian Ramirez telling us once uh, what game it was. And it was something. They play weird games. Yes. Um, but there's like a game that they love to play. Like Carlos Atuesta, Christian would always play in it. Um, and I don't know what game. I, I would like to know. Maybe we'll ask uh, Team Security Paul. Team Security Paul. Yes, he gets things done for us, Team Security Paul. Christian Ramirez, we should mention. I mentioned on the broadcast, he's starting every game for Aberdeen, scoring, scoring big goals. goals. And uh, he, they're in Europe too, I believe. In the Conference League. If. Or whatever. Is it Conference League? What is it? Is it not the Europa League? Europa? No. It's the one below it. Oh, uh, that doesn't count then. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Christian. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, but Christian, I, I, I exchange a lot of uh, like DMs and so forth on Twitter. So he's uh, it's great. I'm so happy for him and to have, to be able to have that experience. It's incredible. Aberdeen, mm-hmm. the club where Sir Alex Ferguson started, and they won the they won the uh, 
Cup Winners Cup, as it was known back then, they beat Juventus. What? Why would you do that to me? I got to confirm that. I think I don't think Juventus. they beat Juventus. No. Uh, sorry, I have to do this. I this I this have to get this. You right. have to. You just just dead air. I, I got to fill this for you. I don't think it was Juventus. I bet dead you, air. I bet you it was an Italian team. I was. I want to say it's probably like Parma, or maybe a Lazio, but I, I don't think it was Juventus, because Juventus definitely won a UEFA Cup around that time with Roberto Baggio, one of Roberto Baggio's only pieces of silverware. Do you get some story time with Christopher Sullivan in the broadcast about Roberto Baggio and his Brescia days? You get, I've heard about 800 stories about that. Why, well, why didn't he share it on the broadcast? I would have liked to hear that. Better story <laughs> than, the, than the George Best story. George Best. I said we could call San Jose LAFC rivalry the George Best Derby because he played for the, he played for the Earthquakes and he played for the Aztecs with right. Todd Saldana, our academy right. director. And El- Elton John was a uh, co-owner of that team at the time, right? Elton John... Of the Essex, correct. Yes. Are you still finding that? Yes. Oh, Max, come on. Just killing us here. I just looked for the wrong way. Everyone, it could have everyone been 19th. that's listening to the podcast has now Googled this quicker than you have. I know. I put the wrong search engine. Uh, speak Would you go amongst to yourselves. You, are you on Ask Jeeves? Are you still one of those guys? <laughs> uh, Max. I hated that. Energy. Max has a Bing on his phone. If you guys can believe it. All right, here we go. 1983, okay, we go. European Cups Winners' Cup. This definitely wasn't I Juventus. I apologize. Man. It was not Juventus. It was Real Madrid. Wow. But Aberdeen beat Real Madrid. Real Madrid. Two okay. to one. I would, say, I would say in a lot of ways that's even more impressive. And Goals uh, by Willie Wise. Willie uh, Wise. Oh, what a player. Ah, great. Willie Wise. Yeah. Uh, you needed a goal. Uh, Willie Wise would get it for you. Yeah. Yeah. Especially against Real Madrid at the Yalevi Stadium in, in Gothenburg. Oh, I put the phone. This is. I just want to see who scored the goal. All right, that's gone too far. All right, let's yeah, talk about Lionel far. Messi. Max, you have you have hot takes on Lionel Messi. You said, uh, you, "Why do you always have to be right?" Because you called this what two years ago that this three was going to end three years ago. It was going to end badly. Always going to end epically badly. It was going to end badly, and boy, I had no idea it was going to end this badly because I did not know. I tuned in that press conference. I did not know I was tuning into. Uh, it was like a benediction at a funeral. Mm-hmm. It was depressing. I was like, oh, oh, I feel awful. You see the family and the teammates all. I did it, but I walks I've, to the podium and then almost walks away. Walks away. Yes, back. comes back, and then he says the line, "I wanted to leave last year, but I didn't want to. Now my family wanted to stay. It was like showed all his cards." Yeah. And then we find out now that Barcelona were never going to be able to sign him. Pretty much. La Liga is not allowing it, which is still crazy. I know they want Barcelona. And I think the important thing is Barcelona has to get their finances in order and worry about the future. It's weird because long term, this is probably good for La Liga, what they're doing. uh, But it's never good to lose Messi from your league. So it's like, how do you balance those two things? I, I legitimately thought that ESPN was going to somehow find a way to pay it. What do you think, because I was talking about this, if MLS, you know, pie in the sky, were to sign him, what would it be worth? What it, I said half a billion dollars because the rights fees were going into there would go up mm-hmm. at least 100K, if at not least. more. At least. Because Messi's involved. Yeah. Shirts, tickets, PR, all of that. Uh, Lionel Messi appearing on Max and Vince podcast. Obviously, that comes with the dollar sign amount, yep. too. If he came in here, I mean, we all of a sudden, we'd have two advertisers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to be here once. And you know who would get him, too. Yeah. Team Security Paul would be Team the one that <laughs> got, got for us. Uh, no, you're right. Team it, Security Paul would say, I'm friends with Matias Almeida. Yeah. I know a guy who knows a guy. The, the TV deal is where the, the real, the real money is. It's just timing-wise. The league's yeah, like, we get him. Whoever wants to broadcast MLS next season, know they'll get... Ten messy games. The the TV broadcast deal is up after next year, next season. So you need to get them in either now or. Well, you get one year with the old TV. It's, you know, it's everyone. It's still a big risk. Do, is it a foregone conclusion that he's going to play in MLS? It seems like it's heading that direction. But if it's it's at Miami, they'll have to fix a few things in advance. And I, I just want to see if Messi's ready to play games down there in July and August because it, it's going to be rough. It's going to be rough. But maybe Australia will come in last minute. Big yeah, I mean, but Liga MX, imagine what they did it. Mm. If he wants to, it has what Messi does, but he's going to try and go for it. I guess the key is if he goes to PSG and wins a Champions League, but I don't think they're going to do that because the Premier League teams, the two Manchester clubs and Chelsea, have just gotten 
And PSG, like we said, you can't just throw these superstar players out there and expect a good result. Right, and we're not talking, I mean, it's still messy, but we're not talking 29-year-old messy. Yeah. Uh, we're talking 34-year-old Messi. Neymar, a little more stationary Messi. Last time, last time I saw Neymar, he was on a boat. Didn't look like he was in the best shape. Uh, so somehow he's, you know what? You know what? Neymar's probably just saving himself for that. He's like, it doesn't matter what we do in the French league anyway. So I'll just, I'll just come into form by February when the knockout rounds start, and we'll do it. We'll do it then. Yes, the uh, French league started this weekend, and a uh, PSG road win at Troyes. So uh, the leagues are back. There, Did you notice there that? There you go. I know. This weekend is the start of the Premier League, too. Yeah. It's hard to and get Italy, into it after the summer we had. And Spain starts this weekend also. Everyone starts this weekend. Germany. Germany? What was the best? Uh, oh, but before we get off Messi. You were looking at the, the, the uh, German Cup scores? What yes, because I'm, I'm What was the best I'm, lower division German name you saw? Uh, I couldn't tell you. It was like all cup, DFB Poco. Yeah. Um, Derek Ray could tell us. Of course. He could tell you what Fuskanga Uberbang means and then use it in a sentence later. What but. Does uh, I don't know. Ask Derek. Like, did you just curse? I hope I didn't. Okay. I don't think I did. I took no. some German lessons at one point. For our three German listeners. Danke. <laughs> Willkommen. So, uh, how does Lionel Messi not know that situation? That this was untenable? That, and I, I blame his, his agent, which is his dad. Which is his dad. How does he go, well, how did this happen? I go, you should know. You talk to the, the clubs beforehand and get an idea. Yeah. And they knew June the 30th when Lionel Messi's contract expired that this was never going to happen. How does it come into August and your client's completely hoodwinked? Well, you know what's funny? I, their statement, I, was, I, I looked at somebody, I was like, they're trying to get people in Barcelona to just ransack the La Liga offices like the way they worded it they're like oh these these obstacles these obstacles if only we could overcome these obstacles and I was like so I think I think they legitimately thought that they'd just get bailed out because yeah. Barcelona and Real Madrid for the longest time basically ran La Liga not not anymore and it's gonna be for the best but yeah I think they legitimately were just like eh, no one cares we'll, we'll 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 just sweep it under the rug no one will. it's messy yeah they wouldn't make us get rid of Messi, would they oh they did I think there will be. I think there'll be some relief from Barcelona once they can move on to the next phase where they can do business properly. They know they've got the quicker they get this behind them, the quicker they can get to some normalcy. Yep. And it can't be Messi or Griezmann on there. It's got. It's got to be. We're doing something new. We're going to struggle for a couple of years. What do you want to bet that they somehow break the bank for Erling Holland and <laughs> just ruin it all over again? <laughs> Or, well, something's got to be done about these. Well, these Mbappe. I mean, everyone salaries, seems to think Mbappe is going to go to Real Madrid. These wages are in, insane. And obvi- yeah, by the way, and we with, talk about the Super League. Th- those five or six teams are going to keep doing it. And other teams are like, look, the, the marketplace. We looked at it with MLS. It's not there. Yeah. It, it's deflated, and they're like, we can't spend money on that. We can't. But these other guys can drop a hundred million on Lukaku, a hundred million on Jack Grealish. Well, and now without Messi. Barcelona is still spending 95% of its revenue on wages. I heard it was 110%. It was 110 with Messi. That's why they couldn't do oh, 95%. it. 95%. And it just knocked him down to 95. Progress. I guess it was going to take the hit on that. Uh, Joe Blow at the Barcelona office. Yeah. Joe, you're in trouble. Joe Blow, you're in trouble. Okay, I thought that was pretty thorough. Yeah. Not one of our best podcasts. Okay. Uh, but I, 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 this was, I thought this was our best podcast ever. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll go back to the drawing board. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll figure it out. But obviously, the subject matter is a little different. We'll be back after Atlanta, and we will have a big guest for you to talk about all the happenings with LAFC. Please subscribe, rate, review, download. You know the drill. Inside LAFC, Max and Vince podcast. See you later.